Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the tutorial number 14 of the series Special Effects for Games. And today we are going to see how to create this ice attack and this time it's going to be a little bit of an advanced tutorial. Since most of the stuff that I use in this effect is explained in the tutorials that you can find in the description or in my channel. So if you are starting with special effects, I really really recommend you to check out the links I left in the description. As you can see, this effect has a lot of components really a lot of components and it takes several hours to do this so since i want to share with you this knowledge i figured out that i'm going to show you the most important features of this effect which are basically the ice spikes coming from the ground and the derbies we haven't seen in any of the tutorials how to do derbies and we are also going to see how to create this slash but I gotta tell you that this was made in After Effects and it's not going to be in this tutorial. I know a lot of people don't have access to After Effects, but I'm still gonna show you for those who are interested to see how it's made. So let's see how we can do this. So let's go ahead and create an empty game object. Rename it to Particle System Ice Attack or something similar. And I'm just gonna place it somewhere nice, like this, okay. So, next thing we want to do is to create the first particle system, which is going to be for the ice that you can see in the ground. Let's rotate it in the Y axis 90 degrees, at least for me. The duration of this effect is going to be 9 seconds. And let's set the start speed to 0, because we don't want this to move. And let's change the shape to circle. Which, by the way, we need to rotate minus 90 degrees in the X, like this. Ok, let's increase the radius to around 8, that really depends on the size you want to achieve. And let's decrease the rate over time in the mission to 0, because we want to use bursts. And we want to use a burst with a minimum of 14 and a maximum of 80. And let's control the max particles in this parameter and let's set it to 80. Now let's go ahead and change the start size, between 4 and 8 or maybe more. And uh, you can go to Google and search for a nice texture. After that you can open the image in Photoshop or your image editing software. And create a new layer which will be painted as black, like this. Now let's go ahead and select the marquee tool to create a novel selection, like this, more or less in the center. Now let's press Ctrl Shift I to select the opposite. Basically we are inverting our selection. And let's feather our selection by 100 pixels, like this. And now we can press delete. And again we can press delete until we don't see the ice texture touching the boundaries of our canvas. And now the idea is that we select the raising tool and we start creating these patterns, these stretch. And we can use different brushes to create a nice texture with some diversity. Until we get to something like this. At least this was the one that I used for the effect that we have seen in the beginning. And now the idea is that we create a folder called Ice Attack and we import your textures and then we can create a material which can be renamed Ice Ground and we want to select the shader to Particles Additive and we can drop the image we have created to this slot and then we can drop the material to the Ice Ground like this. Okay, that's nice. Now we need to go to Render, the last parameter, and set the billboard alignment to Local. And if you don't see nothing happening, it's probably because the effect is below the ground. So let's push it a little bit up, until we see the textures on the ground. Now we want to create some randomness as usual, so let's set the start rotation to be random between two constants, between 0 and 360, randomize rotation to 1, and let's set the start color to be random between two colors. I'm gonna select a darker blue and then a lighter blue, almost white. Next thing we want to do is to fade in and fade out the particles. And for that we use the color over lifetime. The keys on top control the alpha and the keys on the bottom controls the color. We want something like this. And now let's use the size over lifetime to make sure that the particles grow with this curve. And you can add a key with the right click, in case you don't know. Ok, that's looking great. Now, we want to set a random start lifetime, something between 3 and 6.5. We actually want these particles to live longer than the spiky rocks that we are going to use in a moment. 
And as you can see, I've created some rocks separately and other ones were grouped. And for that, we can go to Blender or to your 3D software. And we can start with a cylinder like this one, which has 12 sides. I'm not gonna go too much in depth, but I can tell you that you may need to cut it four times, like this with Ctrl R if you are in Blender. And with proportional editing on, O for shortcut, we can create this shape by scaling it down and moving those vertex to that position. So after I have created this spiky rock, like I said, we can use groups of rocks and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to duplicate these four times. And then I'm basically going to create some randomness, make some spikes bigger than others, create some irregularities, you know. And uh, that's basically it. After I have done that, I basically create the UV maps and then I export as an FBX to Unity. I create a folder called models and import the spiky rocks. Now let's go ahead and create a new particle system. We can rename it to Ice Spikes. Let's set the duration to 9 seconds. And let's go down here to Renderer and change the render mode to Mesh. So we can basically use the mesh of the rock that we have created. And now we can see some tiny rocks. But let's first set the start speed to 0 so it doesn't move up. And now let's go ahead and turn on 3D start size and let's set it to be random between two constants. Now, as you may have noticed, the values that worked for me may not work for you, so you have to try and figure out what is best for your rocks. Let's set the rate over time of the emission to be 0, and let's set the max particles to be 20. Let's add a new burst with a minimum of 15 and a maximum of 30. Now, let's change the shape to a box, and we can decrease the box Z to 0, and set the X and Y to 7 and 10 respectively. Ok, that's great, now we have some cool rocks. And now we basically need a material, and uh, I have actually used the same texture that I used to the ice ground, but I have used the original one. And then I go to this amazing site called Normal Map Online, where you can drag and drop your image and it will create the normal, the displacement, the ambient occlusion and the specular maps, which is really awesome. And you can control these values and at the end you can download these textures and import them to Unity. Now you can basically create a material, I am using the shader standard, I drop the diffuse map to the albedo and to the detail albedo too, and the ambient occlusion to the occlusion the normal map to the normal map, and the rest of the maps to their respective place. And that's basically it for our material. Now I'm gonna show you a little trick in the renderer and you can add another mesh if you want. That's why I was saying that we can create grouped rocks or rocks separately. And you can add meshes in this plus sign and simply drag the mesh like this. Ok, that's cool, that's great. Then now we only need one last thing, which is the size over lifetime. And I'm basically going to use pretty much the same curve that I used before, which gives this cool sensation that the rocks are coming from the ground. Now, the next particle system is going to be for the particles. Let's set the duration to 9 and the max particles can be 100, at least for now. Let's set the rate over time to 0 and add a new burst, which is going to have a minimum of 50 and a maximum of 150. And now as you can see, the particles are moving at the same time, they are pretty much equal to one another. We need to create some randomness, and let's do that by setting the start lifetime to be random between 2 and 6.8 or something similar. Let's also set the start speed to be random between 1.5 and 7, or 5, maybe even less. And let's set the start size to be random between 0.1 and 1. And one is probably too much. Now we can create some random colors, like this. And we can turn on color over lifetime to fade in and fade out our particles. And now to create some more random movement, I'm going to use the velocity over lifetime with values of minus 5 and 5 to the x and y which is too much and I'm going to decrease it to minus 2 and 2 because I want the particles to go a little bit up and to the side at the same time. You can add another burst if you want at 0.2 yeah like this and now let's turn on size over lifetime 
and I'm gonna use this curve. Okay, that's cool. Now let's add the smoke. I'm gonna set the duration to 9 as usual and the max particles to 120. And as you can see, I'm going to use this image, which for the sake of this tutorial, you can find one by searching for smoke PNG. You can import it to Unity, create a material with the shader set to particles additive and drop the material to the smoke particle system. Okay, now let's change a couple of things. Like the emission, we can set it to zero because we are always going to use a burst. And in this case, I'm going to actually use two bursts with a minimum and a maximum of 30 and 60. Now let's create some randomness for the size and two between five should be enough. Let's also set the start rotation to be random between 0 and 360. Set the randomized rotation to 1. And now I'm actually going to use some light blue with the alpha decrease to around 150. And the second color is going to be a, a white with the alpha decrease to 120. Okay, now we have this big puff of smoke and we can change that by setting the start speed to be random between 0 0.2 and probably 1.8, maybe less. Now I'm going to actually set the shape to be a sphere, but I'm gonna change in a moment to an hemisphere, because we don't need smoke to go below the ground. And this puff of smoke is still too big, so let's set the start size to be a little bit smaller. And I'm going to increase the radius of the sphere just a little bit. I'm also going to use velocity over lifetime, as you can see. The color over lifetime is also needed. And as usual, the size over lifetime. And in this particle system, I'm actually going to use a rotation over lifetime, which is going to be random between 10 and 30. Maybe less, maybe more. It's up to you guys. Now let's go ahead and create one of the most important particle system, which is the derbies, which are going to be used for some rocks flying around. And for that, we need to set the render mode to a mesh. And as you can see, I've created this small rock, which is just a few polygons. I believe you can do it, it's really easy. And I'm going to import it to the mesh slot. Now, I'm actually going to unparent the derbies so I can see it working and show you a few things. The first thing is that we are going to increase the start size to be between 2 and 15. The start speed is also going to be random between 0.3 and 2. As well as the start lifetime between 3 and 6.5. Now let's decrease the max particles to 50, maybe more, and the rate over time to 0, and let's add a new burst. We are actually going to use two bursts. The first one has a minimum of 20 and a maximum of 50, and the second one is between 30 and 60. For the shape, we are actually going to use a box and this box is going to be more or less the size of the rest of the effect. And now one of the most important parameters is the gravity modifier. And we are going to use random values between 0.4 and 0.6. And as you can see now, the particles just move a little bit up and then they go down. This parameter basically allows us to add gravity to our particles. But we need a few more things, like a material, for instance. I'm gonna use the same as before, okay, that's better. Let's also use the velocity over lifetime, because we want these derbies to move around and not simply to go up and down. So I'm gonna set the random range between minus 6 and 6 for the x, minus 5 and 5 for the y, and minus 2 and 5 for the Z. And this is the end result that I get. Which is really great, it looks like an explosion of derbies. And that's basically it, because our ice spikes are coming from the ground, and that's the sensation that we want. And now the next important thing is to turn on collision. And we want to change it to world. And now if you simulate, you are actually going to see something crazy happening. And uh, the rocks are basically flying around. But if you look closely, you can see that some rocks are colliding with the ground. 
and that's because of the collider basically and we can see the collider by turning on visualize bounds and as you may notice these colliders are incredibly big basically this collision model creates this sphere collider with a really big size and we need to adjust it in the radio scale and 0.05 should be enough as you can see now the sphere collider is really small which is great now we can use some dampen and basically dampen will decrease the motion of the rocks when hitting the ground it will slow them down I'm gonna set a random number between 0 0.04 and 0 0.15 let's also set a random number to the bounce to be between 0 0.3 and 0 0.6 and the bounce basically controls the amount of bounce the derbies are going to have okay great now we only need one more thing which is the size over lifetime and I'm going to use the same curve as I used before. I really enjoy these derbies actually. I have to tell you, they are great. Now if you want to add some more details we can duplicate the particle system. Rename it to Flakes. I went basically to Google again to search for a Flake PNG. I found one, I imported to Unity, created a material with the shader set to Particles Additive and drop the material on top of the flakes particle system and now I basically decrease a little bit the max particles and also decrease the start speed and that's it, you have created the first model and if you want to create this kind of effect I actually use a three models similar to this one we created and the main difference is the size the quantity of the rocks and the particles and smoke and the start delay because the start delay will allow you to control when each model is going to be simulated which is very useful and at the end I created this slash in After Effects but that one deserves a tutorial of its own and it's going to be the next video actually of Game Effects so if you are interested stay tuned for more guys subscribe for weekly game development tutorials and uh, I hope you have enjoyed guys this is it for this tutorial you can download this in my Patreon in case you want to support me I will appreciate a lot if you do so and see you in the next tutorial guys.